you know, uh, as we walk around with our cell phones or next year our Google Glass or our iWatch, we're going to need services to be faster and faster because if you're looking at a cookie and you're, or a product like a camera and you don't see that information pop up within a microsecond, you're going to not believe in the Google Glass. You're not going to uh, like the experience and you're going to go somewhere else that provides that better experience. That's why I've always been interested in companies like Akamai that uh, help bring uh, the speed to the edge, right? If you were in India, you needed that to make your website run better. But today we're on a different network topology and we're using wireless devices. And so Akamai and we're dealing with streaming data like Twitter and uh, stuff that changes so often. It's not like the web that I used to hand code in 1994. So Instart Logic, who's here right now, is going to tell us how they're making this new contextual data system faster. And that's really interesting to me and interesting to Rackspace as well. Who are you? I'm Manav Mittal, CEO and co-founder of Instart Logic. I'm actually a computer scientist turned entrepreneur. I started out doing my PhD in theoretical computer science. So I was in this dark dinghy lab in the heart of Beverly Hills, UCLA. Yeah. And I was working on some fairly complex problems that I felt maybe a dozen people in the world would care about. Realized, didn't want to do that with my life, so moved to the Bay Area, worked for Yahoo Search, a product that a billion people use, but I was working on these really incremental things that I felt would not amount to that much, so left to join a startup. I joined Astra Data, Sequoia-funded startup, early big data pioneer. I was an early engineer over there, worked on some really interesting big data problems that were used by a lot of customers, and most importantly, there I had the good fortune of meeting my future co-founders, Hari and Raghu, with whom I started Instart Logic. Yeah. So at Instart Logic, we have developed a really cool technology that enables web publishers to stream their web applications to end users. And it helps them deliver a really premium online experience, which is very performance oriented. And for the end users, the internet just becomes that much faster and such a better place. Well, so, I, I like how you think, and we're gonna get into why this technology works mm -hmm. better than other existing technologies. But we're heading into a new age where we're gonna have lots of sensors on us, we're gonna have exactly, wearable yeah. computers on our wrist and yeah, yeah, yeah. on our face and, and our cell phone and our tablet. And we're walking around and we're, I know I, un, I uninstall apps now if they don't behave fast, right? That's how critical this is. Yeah. It, it, my, my son is autistic and he literally throws his iPad on the ground if YouTube doesn't work. Right? Yeah. They don't put, uh, kids today don't put up with not mm -hmm. having instant access to stuff. Yeah. Um, is that, is, is, so where do we even start? <laughs> so tell me why your algorithm can deal with this new streaming world, because these sensors are gonna stream data up to the cloud, and the cloud is streaming data down to my devices in my eye. Twitter comes in my Google Glass, right? Yeah. Why is your algorithm and why is your system of, better than Akamai or some other system. Yeah, so let me just ex expand uh, on what you said just a little bit more, right? So what you're talking about makes perfect sense and the problem is even two levels deeper than that. Like today, for instance, if you go to Starbucks, everybody in front of you is using their phone. On the couches, people are using tablets and on the desks, people are using laptops. And all these people, whether consumers or an enterprise, people now connect to the internet using a wireless network. It's very hard to come by somebody who's using like wire to connect to the internet anymore. And wireless does some very interesting things to this traditional delivery bottlenecks. And that's the big, dis the technological disruption that these incumbent CDN players are up against. Yeah. When these CDNs came up, Robert, what happened was, you know, the big bottleneck, the big problem was in the core of the internet. We have all these ISPs, the core is unreliable. I have to sort of guarantee that uh, reliability to web publishers and also, you know, the end users are accessing content which is very cacheable and it's very static and you can sort of mirror them at different points all over the world. So when users access the website, they get directed to one of these cache nodes and that worked really well. But now we have the scenario that you talked about where people are accessing content on the go on wireless networks and in these scenarios, the bottleneck shifts out of the core into this last mile yeah. between the device and this really congested radio interface that we're talking to. And that could be 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi. 
It could be any kind of a wireless transmission medium. And these CDNs, just because of the virtue of the fact that they are in the core, they don't really impact this bottleneck. Yeah. So that's how our play. The way we address this is the following. So the analogy that I like to give is, you know, for instance, uh, over a decade ago, when people used to watch video online, they used to go to some site and download an entire file. Yeah. And the optimizations back then are analogous to what CDNs are doing today. File compression, network optimizations, figuring out which server to put the file on, and you had to download this entire file before you could start playing it, right? We, we should see uh, what this actually looks like on screen. Yeah, right? we should actually do that, sure. Because uh, it's quite, it, how you bring data to my screen yeah. is quite different. Yeah, so we can the... start out with a demo. Yeah. And this is, you know, one of our early customers, Game of Thrones. And this is the game, official game for that very popular HBO show that everyone likes. And on the left, it's loading user in our service and look, the game is already loaded and you can start playing. And on the right, it's loading using a traditional CDN, mega CDN that they were using earlier, right? And these guys tried us out and saw how much we could uh, improve their performance and the time to interaction. And when you see something like this, the publishers go, I want that, yeah. right? And that's basically the, uh, the pitch that we have for these publishers as well, right? We'll take your web application and instead of writing those guys the check, just write it to us and we'll put your application in a Maserati instead of a Ford Ra truck. Rocky, I think we have a second demo, right? That's, that's about to play. Yeah. Um, and let's see that and talk about that because it, th then you get to see some of the caching differences. Yes. So for instance, this is an, a typical e-commerce web page. Again, yeah. on the left using our service and on the right using a legacy CDN. And this is where our technology fits squarely in, right? So typical scenario is you go to an e-commerce site, it gives you some recommendations for shoes you should buy based on what you're clicking, et cetera. And it gives you these really high resolution, compelling, rich images because they want to sell their products to you, yeah. right? And when you're pulling it from the edge, you download these entire files. And the browsers are very smart today, CDNs are very good about reliability, but you still have to go around downloading these entire files one by one, and then you render them. What Does your technology, uh, my Google Glass is going to be, it's the first consumer electronics device that knows where I'm looking, mm -hmm. uh, where, am I, where I'm aiming. So mm -hmm. the sensors are firing, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. boom, boom, yeah, and yeah. they can be pushing that data up to a, a cloud server, yes. right? And where you're looking. So yes. you look at a logo, all yes. of a sudden you can put something there. Yes. Are, are you able to optimize for that? Because you can see um, on that page, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Akamai just doesn't keep up. Yes. Does, will you optimize this real world walk around and get e-commerce information in yes. my so eye? It, 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 uh, yes. So basically, uh, the one of the bottlenecks that you have in such a mobile experience is when you're constantly changing what you're pulling from the cloud yeah. on a Wi-Fi, that becomes a huge bottleneck right there. Right? And no amount of caching at the edge and no amount of just you know, those network optimizations will help you. So instead of pulling them, those large files one at a time, by streaming those files, like exactly like that video example that I gave you, Instart will be able to help. Wow. So I, I think you have a long future. <laughs> no, we think so too. No, I think this is a very exciting space. You know, and and yeah. people think about it as the CDN space, where you sell to web publishers and make their web applications go faster. There's some very interesting mega trends that are happening in the space, right? And it's like, if you look at the enterprise world, earlier a remote office worker or a mobile worker was somebody who worked out of his home on a home desk. And you had a PC that was connected to the wire, talking to some remote data center somewhere, right? And with these van optimization controllers and whatnot that accelerated those enterprise applications and make sure that your remote office, uh, office workers were productive. Now your remote office workers work in Starbucks, they work in their cars, they work in their flights, again, on the go, accessing applications on Wi-Fi. And those applications themselves are moving out of data centers to the cloud. So once again, you have a reflection of that CDN market onto that enterprise world, creating an opportunity that just did not quite exist. Yeah. Now performance was always important for these applications and that's why these companies spent billions on man optimization controller and whatnot. Yeah. But you know, we are going to see this very canonical delivery and consumption mechanism in the cloud apps, very personalized, being pulled across the internet, across a wireless last mile to the end user on a mobile device. And that's the problem that Instart is going after. So who buys this? Is it gonna, because Rackspace Cloud has Akamai, right? Yes. And we bought that mm -hmm. so that our cloud would be faster toward the edge. Yes. You know, the Indian customer will yes. have a great ex, uh, yes. experience yes. With, with our cloud. Yes. So is it gonna be the Rackspace or is it gonna be the app developer? Tell me, who, or who's yeah. gonna buy this so, system for Yeah, me? so from a business perspective, this is basically we are selling to people who traditionally bought CDN services. Yeah. And over there, the, the verticals that we're looking at are you know, people in the non-video category. Because from the, in the video business, right, like streaming already exists, Adobe, RealPlay, they've solved this problem. 
but for, it's for the web applications that we're solving this problem now. So our target customers are you know, e-commerce players, online gaming companies, SaaS application publishers, travel hospitality, such those type of guys. Yeah. Yeah. And is the price similar to Akamai, or is there is there a cost differential? So we have an enterprise sales model where you know if a customer wants to talk to us, we send a salesperson. He figures out what the best plan is. But exactly the best thing about this, you know, it's we don't need to create a budget for this. You know, publishers today are using CDN, spending dollars on that, and all these publishers are fairly sensitive to load times yeah. because over the last decade, companies like AT and T, Google, Facebook, Apple, they've done a ton, Walmart, they've done a ton of research. To show the correlation between load times and all other key business I, metrics. I right? get the yeah. I get the benefit. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, you know, is it two times as much? Ten no, times no, no. It's, as it's much? in the same ballpark. Same ballpark. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. I'm paying X yeah, yeah. for Akamai today, yeah, yeah, I should yeah, yeah. expect to pay about the same yeah. for you. Do I rip out Akamai and use yes, you, or yes, do you put yes. do you put it on top? No, of it's, it's a replacement for a CDN. So whatever okay. CDN it is that we're using, we let you we replace that, and we let you do it in a very incremental fashion. So it's not like a full yank out. We can sort of try, you can try a little bit, see how it compares head to head against a CDN. And we live in the world of measurement. Most people these days use different tools like New Relic and AppDynamics and whatnot. Yeah. So you can use your tool of choice, see how we do. And if you like us, you can just keep expanding. So what, one of the reasons we use uh, CDNs is so that you know our servers are here in the United States and we have customers in India. Yeah. How do we get the page to India so that they have a great experience? Yeah. Do you show a lot of... Uh, analytics or uh, stats you know about what's going on in the world and where things are maybe not as good or as good you know yeah so we do at uh, for our purposes capture a lot of interesting data like you know this company was started by big data guys yeah. and that was the premise so we do a lot of analysis of how users use applications what are the bottlenecks in applications and do streaming to adapt to all those different scenarios but what we have found is publishers today they have like a ton of tools out there free tools to pay tools to some very sophisticated tools and you know people will just fit right into that world you know it's just because it's a CDN replacement people know how to measure that so they just use those to measure our performance as well if there was a um, d disaster here in San Francisco uh, let's say a big earthquake yeah uh, infrastructure goes away right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then some of it's still around and yeah, some yeah. of it would be very impacted very you know you might be able to get an SMS out, but yeah. not voice, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not uh, a nice web page. Does your technology help uh, heal that system in that yes, kind of situation? Yes, it does. We have a fully geographically distributed network, which does, so there's like a backend component to our service, which you know is fully geographically distributed, does all the caching network optimization best practices, yeah. and also does the large scale data analysis of how to fragment these various different applications. And we have like full you know geographic reliability and scalability and everything built into it, failover and everything built into it. So if there's you know let's say some location goes down, so the traffic will automatically get routed to some other location somewhere. And then because you know we were a startup, uh, we started out you know building this entire geographical service with no money basically. So we started out by building a software layer on top of the most of the available clouds today. So it's our managed infrastructure. If, if something happens to it, that entire thing goes down, it spills over to a combination of different public clouds. So yeah. So very smart. And you can sort of simulate this when you go into a basement of a building, your uh, LTE goes from five star down to one star mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it goes to 3G and maybe even lower. Mm -hmm. Does it help with that kind of situation where the, the pipe, the wireless pipe goes really thin? Yeah, it, so it, it definitely helps. But so if the, it's, uh, I think the question is more around if the access network goes down. Now that is something that you know we don't control. Yeah. It's our, our but a lot of times the access doesn't go down. It just you know if you're in a if basement, it degrades, yes. you have one star. One, yes. you know you, it degrades. Yes. Right? No, it, it, you don't have the full nice yeah, yeah. LTE anymore. You have a, a thin, small little pipe. No, for, data, for that right? situation, our service is actually perfect. And because the rational there is right. So let's say you start out with a really strong LTE connection and you start pulling in some images, right? And now you've down. Let's say it's a three MB image. You've downloaded half of it. You go into the basement. That signal drops and you still have to download this 1.5. By streaming, we'll send you whatever we can send you, and you can still interact with it, you can still look at it. So it's not like you have this half-loaded image that you're waiting for, and you know. Brilliant. Yeah.
Okay, you know, you're gonna be a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. the, well, the goal is to make Instant Logic successful. To be like, when you're an entrepreneur yeah. and when you're a founder, you know, it's like it's who, who invested in you? We've got some really nice investors uh, and recent Horowitz, yeah. uh, Tanaya Capital, of course, uh, Greylock, Sutter Hill Ventures, and some really nice individual invest angels as well. I'll be honest, I, I, I've done thousands of interviews. I don't meet guys like you very often, so well, it makes you. sense that the rock stars of investors are like excited about what you're doing. Yeah, this is my first video interview, so yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much because yeah. what you're doing is really interesting. Yeah. It's going to help all of us. So we hope so. Yeah. Um, uh, we covered what you, how this works, and thank you so much. Um, how do we get it at Rackspace Cloud? Uh, just int introduce me to the person who would be interested in your, who's sort of doing the CDN purchase, and we'll talk to them. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So should I? Just